What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. Today we're back at East Tech and I am with iSwiss. I'm with Dragon and Amari from iSwiss. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you guys do? iSwiss uh, is a company that caters uh, sliding headstock machines uh, or also known as Swiss type machines. Uh, we started, uh, got in business about five years ago. We noticed there was a niche for uh, quality tooling uh, with the fast deliveries. Uh, and that's where we're trying to fill that void uh, by providing our customers quick turnarounds uh, and the tooling selections that they need, tool holder selections that they need. Um. Now, the one thing you were telling me that people may not know, because I didn't know this, is that when it comes to Swiss machines, as opposed to a vertical mill or a straight turning lathe, there's very little interchangeability between the parts from brand to brand. The holders are specific to, very specific to brand of machines and even models of the machine. Machines evolving constantly and Swiss machines being small, there's always tooling changes and what fits in each machine. And it's, uh, we stock a lot of this stuff, so it doesn't matter what you have, we try to have accommodate you. I also know quite a bit of Swiss machines, so we have a lot of customers that call, come to us and says, uh, how do I get this in there? And I can help with a lot of that stuff. You know, you can work with this or you can add this or, you know, some of the stuff, these applications, we even have a display here. You know, if you need a tooling, we have a way to add increased capacity by 50% from four to six tool holders. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of applications like that where we can, uh, we can come in. We, all of this stuff is stocked in the U.S. Uh, even the stuff that we import, all of, most of our stuff comes out of uh, Germany. Uh, lead times are very short compared to most of our competition. Because that's one of the biggest things that you guys are offering, is that instead of having a three to four week lead time, you can get this off the shelf and as long as it takes UPS or whoever to get it to their door. Exactly. We, a lot of our business is shipping next day or within a couple of days. You know, we're, we provide high quality product with very fast deliveries. And um, at the end of the day, every machine shop needs to get the parts made as soon as possible. What are some of the biggest challenges you're seeing with switch shops that are facing right now? Well, right now it's labor shortage, I think. Labor shortage. Which we do not help with. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> um, technology has evolved and um, people, are, people still need to be educated in what's, what this new stuff can do. Right. And some of the stuff that we have is, you know, you increase your machine capability by a little bit, and then we come in and we're like, all right, we can triple that with a couple different tooling holders right. that do multiple things. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that's our main, main thing that we do. Because one of the big things about Swiss machining is that it's very easily automated and it's very good for large runs of parts, is it not? Swiss machining is not worth it unless you're making a lot of parts. Right. You know, it's a uh, Swiss, it's not a one-off, two-offs, you know, unless you're making hundreds of parts, you know, better Which be is actually, that's a good thing if you're, good. if you're trying to deal with a labor shortage, because then you can get more parts out with less manpower. Exactly, you know, we, uh, and more stuff is coming to Swiss machining, stuff that used to be uh, small quantities on a small milling machine can, Swiss machines are getting bigger right. each time, and now things that used to be a long running jobs on a milling machine can be made on a Swiss. You know, things, they don't have to be round things anymore. You right. can make a square things. Because they have live tooling and everything. They all have live want. tooling. And that's, um, we sell a lot of live toolings. More machines are capable to run live toolings. That's, um, Swiss machines are very capable. I think there's, there's gonna be more Swiss machine out there. But yeah. people realize how to use them. And that's what we try to, we try to people, educate people, not just sell them stuff. We try to teach them what they can do with the Swiss machine. And in your experience right now, what kind of shops are you seeing getting into Swiss that weren't into it before? Are you seeing a lot of people getting into it that are not maybe transitioning over from something like straight turning, but are you seeing a lot of people at it as a capability right now? Yes, the, what I hear a lot is people that says that they turned down Swiss work in the past, but there's they're getting a lot of offers for Swiss work that they're deciding to get into Swiss machining and then they come to us to help them utilize their machine with the right tool holders. Because the barrier to entry for Swiss machining used to be very high, as far as I know. The initial investment was, it was, it was a big thing to get into. 
When we were talking earlier, you were saying that actually has come down quite a bit. Yeah, there's, you can get the entry-level Swiss machines, and they're pretty simple. They're getting more user-friendly. Um, you don't have, it's not a big investment to get into Swiss these days. It's not as big of an investment in time either because it's not quite so esoteric in terms of programming and running as it might have used to have been. No, and there's a lot of software right now that can help you program those machines. And um, I, think, uh, I think milling, people that ran milling machines can actually get into Swiss easier than uh, late guys. Really? Why is that? So everything's opposite to them. You know, they're, they like their Z one way, Swiss is the other way. When you teach somebody who's ran a milling machine, they start from scratch, they go with that. Not quite so bad. Not quite so bad. <laughs> <laughs> What's coming out in the next year that you're pretty excited about? Anything you guys are doing with uh, new product lines coming in or? Well, we constantly bring new product lines. Um, we look for what's, what's available in the market, what's needed. Um, this is one of our thing, we call it a smart table. Uh, so what are, what are we do, looking at here? It's a, it's outfitted for Halloween right now with the candy in it, but this is a part inspection. So if you have a Swiss machine running 24-7 overnight, uh, in the morning you come in and you realize they have a broken tool. Now you don't know how many parts are bad and how many are not. Right. So you program this thing, you dump, I don't know, five parts or 100 parts, depending on what you're making, in here, in here, in here. And then you just go backwards and see, once you find the first one that's if this one is good, all of these right. are good. It helps batch them it together. It helps to batch, it separates them so in the morning you don't have to inspect all of them. That's one other thing. And we also, we can you know, do 100 parts here and one part here. If this one is good, all of these are good. Right. So that's one of our product that we sell. Uh, we found a new for coolant delivery. So instead of your old blue lines. Yeah, we all know them and they crack and they break. Knows, they crack and they break. <laughs> These are steel lines. They don't flex. Once you tighten it, it's a solid. And you know that coolant is being delivered to the right spot. Uh, this is an extreme case. This is not a for Swiss machine. But something like this is for Swiss machine. If you tighten it, it's solid. And what are we looking at here from a guy who's not super familiar with Swiss machines? These are your tool holders? So this is a back working for a star machine. Right. Uh, this is a, once the part is picked off by a sub spindle, it comes to this end. Right. Uh, up till recently, it was standard to have four tools. Newer machines will have eight tools. Uh, this is an older version of a gang, uh, back, post, back working to post has four tools. I outfitted with uh, some random offerings that we have. But we all, I also made this uh, expanded by two, two more tool stations. And this is a part you guys bring in special for that purpose? Yes, so this is, it took one st station, I expanded into two more, which gave increased capacity by 50%. Right, when you're dealing with you know, four tools, that is a big jump. Right, and uh, so this is something I can do. We also, you know, this is a speeder, this is a regular, yeah, this goes up to 24,000 RPMs. Wow. This little thing. Would you have to use balanced tools for that or balanced holders or? No. Nope. It holds pretty okay? It holds. It's a, on a Swiss, 24,000 RPMs, you're using very small tools. Oh. <laughs> I guess it's not that impressive when it's a Swiss, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's, a, you know, different cooler lines. You know, this is um, something that we've, we bring in, uh, I don't know anybody that offers this right now in the US besides us. Normal, this is the live tool that gets, cartridge live tool that gets put in the machine. Right. When you're changing this tool, you would have to count a wrench and a wrench to loosen this thing. We have the little locking gizmo, we pop this in, and then you can just use your regular one-handed Right in over, the machine. Change over right in the machine. And this is a manifold block for coolant. So you plumb your coolant in here, and you have three different lines pointing. Oh to yeah! So that's every, crazy. So it's plumbed, stays in the machine, and when you're done changing your ER collet, take this out, and you're good to go. And you're good to go. The rest of it stays in the machine. Fantastic. That's one of the products that we bring to the U.S. market. Uh, safety product. Now, in Swiss type machine, your back working is usually first thing when you open the door, and then you reach for the rest of the machine, and you end up stabbing yourself. These little things will uh, cover your drills, end mills, spool off, different lengths for different tools to cover, 
And while you're working in a machine, you don't have to look down and... I feel like I need some of those for my normal machines because I can't tell you how many times I've got myself doing that. This is something new that we just started a few months ago and we got a lot of good feedback for people. With. And those are for the different collet sizes? So this, this specific one for ER16, right. we have for different collet sizes as well. Simple, very simple thing. But simple works. It saves you a cup. Absolutely. An insurance claim. Where can we find you online if we want to learn more about iSwiss and Swiss machining? iSwissTools.com is our website. Uh, we have lot, we try to put as much info up there. Uh, and you can, you can always call us. Phone number's right on the website. And you guys are on Instagram as well? Instagram, Facebook, all the good stuff. So people can know where to find you. People know. We show new stuff all the time. Yep. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. We'll see you yeah. soon. <laughs> Thank you.